Beef Dudes is live. Oh, why, yes, we are. What's going on, guys? Devin from Reef Dudes, and in the background, I got Mr. Michael from Aaron's Aquarium. Uh, yo. Yo, yo, yo. How are you doing today, buddy? Wonderful, nope. I hope. Hold on, sorry. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh, gotta mute that YouTube. Um, so the other day on Paul's Reefs Community Worldwide stream, we were talking about controllers and redundancies and the whole manual versus, I'm obviously on the tech side, I know Michael's, you're kind of more of a, a manual redundancy kind of guy, so I, it was figured it'd be a really good talk to kind of go today and talk about different forms of backups and redundancies and, you know, how, how safe is your tank? Do you have a backup for your backup or do you have, you know, just the basics and, you know, throw that coin in the pond and hope for the best? <laughs> Kind of, where does that yeah. take it from there? Uh, what's going on in the chat? We've got Gal Gal Raj, Melvin's Aquatics, Robert Woods, Lisa's Aquatics, Haley. What's going on, guys? Happy Wednesday. Reefer Jones, welcome, welcome. Tank Facts, what's going on, guys? So, uh, actually, one question that I just saw come up a few minutes ago, just before I forget about it. Uh, battery backups on a tank. Um, what to use... Depending on which pumps you have, um, I know IceCap does make some. I think theirs are 24 volt ones, possibly. Uh, Ecotech ones are 12 volt, I believe. Uh, I use just a sealed less acid battery. Uh, someone was asking if you can use a car battery for it. You could, however, it's not a good idea because regular batteries that aren't vented or that are vented, when you charge them, they'll actually let off kind of a gas. And you don't want that in your house. That's in a contained area. In your car, it's open, doesn't really matter. But um, in your house, you definitely want to make sure you use a sealed battery so everything's 100% contained. So I just want to throw the one out there just for anyone thinking about going down that road. So sealed, less as sealed lead acid lead acid battery is definitely your friend. So I am a huge proponent of redundancy and multiple layers of redundancy. Back in the early days, I've learned my lesson. I've overflowed stuff more than one time. If anything, everyone should have multiple float valves on anything they put water into. Like, just trust me on it. It sucks waking up in the morning to squish, squish, squish on the floor as you get out of bed and just... So, that, that happens. It's been there. Have you ever done that, Michael? Um, I, I have done in the past, obviously, in the early days. Um, especially in the early days of going from a canister filter to a sump. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely, you know, had my fair share of spills. Hence the reason why I've now got a waterproof floor. Smart, smart. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so I have had my fair share of spills, and mm -hmm. obviously, like I said, is this is where this stream sort of like gonna gonna have a true comparison between me and you, isn't it? Because you have also had your fair share of spills, and you've reacted to that in a mm -hmm. completely different way to the way I've reacted to it, haven't I? So, you know. That's obviously why I'm here today, isn't it? Because I'm completely opposite to you. <laughs> and that's why I've dragged you on. <laughs> I appreciate. I really appreciate the different perspectives on it. I think that's one of the most valuable parts for people. So, it's good. Um, first and foremost, how many times? I don't know how many times you have, but in my early days of reefing, I have overflowed my RODI container more times than I could count. I finally learned, and I literally have float valves on every single top-off thing. I have, even my five gallon from my nano top-off, I have a little a float valve with a little push connector. So I take my hose, I plug it in and let it fill it, turns it off. See, so in my big tank, I have a 15 gallon jug. All, all my jugs, everything has those float valves. So those, number one, if you don't have one, spend the freaking $10, buy one now. It's going to save you and your flooring, hands down. Have you overflowed it, Michael? <laughs> um, to be honest, like, uh, I've not... I've never really had an issue with all like auto top ups. I've never had an issue with auto top ups ever, um, which I'm happy about. Um, it tends to be not not all top up, up, sorry, but filling your RODI containers. And, like, no, no, not, about it. because I've not really had an issue with that because I've always like because um, I have my auto top up containers out in my shed. So even if it did happen, it wouldn't. wouldn't oh, be an okay. Issue. Yep. Um, I use um, rainwater butts yep. um 200 liter butts and then um, i've got one of those plastic vault uh ball valves on it yeah so that obviously i don't have to worry about it i take water out of the uh, water butt fill up my uh, container from the tank and i walk away our odi unit clicks on on its own fills okay. up until the thingy turns it off and then, yeah so you, you have know, a full valve so you're good okay that's good so you already have one you, you already got that one covered so it took me a while to, to get to the point of that one um, another big one that I love to do is instead of hauling buckets around, 
I just added like a 50 foot hose from my ODI. So I literally walk it over around, out of the closet, around the corner, down the hall and plug it into my tank and just fill it up directly from there. So no, no haul in buckets. That's one little kind of repack that I found super duper easy. Yeah, I'm the same for me as uh, my shed. Obviously my shed's about 20 feet or so away from my tank. It's mm -hmm. out in the back. So same for me as I've got a nice big return pump, stuck it in the, in the water, but in the shed big holes in it, rim the holes, right? When I used to do water changes, obviously I don't do water changes now, and just put the holes in. Mm -hmm. I'd use the same holes as well to take the water out. Yep. So I'd put the holes in, siphon water out, and then just basically the end that was the water was coming out of, and then plop that into my water butt, put the uh, return pump on, and fill it back up again. Job oh, done. That's good easy peasy. Do. My, yeah. um, one of my LFSs actually has a super slick system. I'm going to do something similar for when I move my tank eventually. But he has the salt water like in the basement below it. He literally has a pump in there, so he flicks a switch, water just starts dumping out into the tank. He has a little floor drain right there to siphon his water out of too, like all rape sized tank. Hulls nothing, literally pokes his hose in, siphons, take it out, next you're done, flick a switch, just starts filling up your thing. And there's another ball valve so he can literally just fill his auto top off. It's like so easy. Very cool system. So that's not classed as redundancy though, though. No, that's, that's not, that's not. That's just abuse, is it? Something that's, that's clever. Like, this <laughs> okay, so <laughs> redundancy wise, um, same thing. Auto top offs, another great example. Uh, one of my buddies that came to Mexico for my wedding, actually, uh, one of his buddies was tank sitting and he's going out of town, so he put the big brute container full of water beside his tank and just jumped his auto top off in. However, if um, your auto top off level is higher than your sump volume, you can create a siphon. So the first time your pump kicks it on, it creates a siphon, and water is going to keep siphoning until that water level equals out. So he literally, my buddy went to go look at his tank, and the water was like a millimeter from the top of the sump. Like, look at the picture, you would have thought his floor was soaked. It literally, like, he was amazed, like one mil, like literally even. I'm, I'm blown away, he didn't have a huge flood. But just that, like having a float valve in there to work as a backup, so save your auto top off. Like that's another huge one. I've heard of lots of people where they've, you know, turned their saltwater tank to a freshwater tank from something getting stuck on, right? So having that extra, you know, ten dollar float valve at the end of your auto top off output is going to be a secondary physical backup to prevent your pump sticking on or something else or a siphon happening. It's another big one. Yeah. Well, that's where I sort of like differ because. I've sort of like set my tank up so that if the auto top up was to stick on, obviously I have set it up so that it doesn't create a siphon. Mm -hmm. um, but I've set it up so that if for whatever reason the auto top up was to dump and dump all of the water in, mm -hmm. there is space for for it to do that in my sump. And not only that, there's also space if two things happen in one go. So. The auto top up dumps all of the fresh water straight into my tank yep. and the power goes out, <laughs> God forbid, and the tank back siphons. I've set it up so that there's enough, you know, it, 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 there's enough, there's enough space for both. Mm -hmm. um, but also what I've done with, um, with my return section, for example, I've made my return section really, really small. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, if, if say, for example, my auto top up fails, and it stops putting water into my tank. The way I do it is, is because the return section is so small, it's literally just the width of the return return pump. Yes, yes. Even if it runs dry, it doesn't affect my salinity. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't adjust my salinity by, I you know. know, by running dry. So that's why I've done that to keep it, you know, uh, that way. So that's my little bit of redundancy mm -hmm. on that side of things. And I just keep my uh, my return nozzles as high as I possibly can in yep. the uh, in the tank. So, one huge thing on that one, always, always, if you're doing a DIY sump, make sure it can handle, when if you lose power to your tank, make sure it can handle whatever that volume is from your return nozzle and your overflow down to your tank. Whatever that is, make sure your sump can handle that volume of water. Because, again, like you can do things like put in a siphon break, which definitely helps. So, I agree you a little hole. So, once the water level drops, it'll let air in, it'll break that siphon. Um, you can use check valves, but same thing, check valves can fail. Um, they work, but they require maintenance. You got to clean them once in a while. If there's sand or snails and stuff in there, I mean, it might stop your water from rushing down, but it'll still trickle down if there's an issue with it. Now, if you guys do use check valves on your return pump, which, you know, it's a good idea to use, especially if your sump can handle it, but make sure you maintain them. 
and make sure you buy one that you can actually maintain, which I know I see some people that buy them, but then they're kind of buggered because they can't open it up. So the double union check valves are usually ones you can open up enough to clean inside. So that makes a big difference because you can throw in vinegar and soak it or do whatever you want to do to clean once in a while. Uh, Jonas was saying... I'm just going um, to go and put the boards back on my tank okay. because they can air an eyes and it might be my tank. Okay, fair. So okay. All right, my volume's low enough. I can't hear that one. Uh, what's up from Big Houston? What's going on, Mr. Big Houston? Herberto? Uh, Jonas, I use a cyber power battery backup for important components and separately two ice cap battery backups. One for gyre and one auto slows down. Perfect, that's an awesome way to do it. I do a very similar thing with my MP40s, but with the DIY battery backup. Now, one other kind of cool feature, um, if you guys have a Vortec pump, you can hook up a battery backup to those and it'll run at a lower speed or in the feed mode. So water never really back siphons out. It'll just, if you lose power, it'll go to battery backup and keep the water flowing, which is kind of a cool one. Uh, I'm excited that a salt water shop opened up only 15 minutes away. Nice, that's pretty awesome. Called Ironic Reefs. Oh, very cool. No, it's always awesome to have a new salt water store. Sadly, I lost all my local ones last summer. That was no fun. So I have to drive a bit further for the good ones now. Uh, so you got a Tunes ETO, triple checklist, optical float, and a timer. Perfect. Love it. Um, Tunes is awesome, actually. Um, if I was doing, if I was to buy an auto top off, like the Tunes E or the Neptune one, would probably be what I go through because they all have multiple levels of redundancy built into them. So yeah, you're you're, you're pretty safe about stuff failing there. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Now on that, I mean, I built like even my DIY optical one. Like my Nano actually does not have redundancy on that one. If it was ever to stick on, that probably be a problem. Uh, I did build one in the past where I had dual sensors on it for that reason. My current one just has a single one. I mean, it's been solid for the last few months, but... I can't hear anything. Hopefully it sounds good for you guys. What's going on, JB Aquatics? Sub JB? JB. Now, the other kind of tech geek side of it. Neptune ATO, awesome. Yep, that one's been solid. Um, so on my tank, I also do a lot of stuff through different forms of controllers. Uh, one of them obviously would be, the more important one I'd say would be a heater controller, whether it's a proper aquarium controller, just a cheap um, heater controller. Uh, what I see people talk about a lot is, I think it's called like an Inkbird, Rainbird or Inkbird, one of the two. And that's like 30 or 40 bucks, and supposedly it's been an awesome, awesome, awesome heater controller. A lot of people recommend it, and it's cheap. Uh, the one I used to use before I used an Apex was called the Ranko, and that was more of a industrial, I guess, class one. And that one was worked really well, same thing. So having a backup heater controller, if you're going to do nothing else for like kind of a redundancy, that's probably one of the biggest ones, because that's the most common thing I see that crashes or kills a tank, from a heater being stuck on or maybe something gets turned off. Um, another big tip I always have, if you're going to run heaters in your tank, run two smaller heaters rather than one big heater. If you you need 300 watts of heating power, get two 150 watts. If one sticks on, it doesn't have enough power to cook your tank. If one dies, the other one can still keep your tank in a decent place. So that's another super easy one that can save a ton of tanks. What's going on, Woody? Reef local, Lisa. So a couple really big ones. Um, what else are good ones? What else you got for good redundancy, Michael? Um. Well, I agree with you on the temperature one. Um, I don't think any tank should be run without a temperature controller. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. Um, because, like you said, these. what I tend to do is, like what you said, I've got two heaters in my system. Um, one's connected to the temperature controller and one isn't. And um, the other one is run off the, you know, the standard thermostat that comes in the glass. Jaeger. Is it Jaeger heaters? Those ones. Yeah. Um, um, and I've set that to 24 degrees Celsius, whereas my temperature controller is set to 25 degrees Celsius. So the the one that's on its own um, controller, uh, thermostat, sorry, mm -hmm. um, technically never comes on yeah. because the temperature is always above where it wants to be, so it's never on. But if, God forbid, my temperature controller fails and the tank starts to cool down, then once we get to 24 degrees or below 24 degrees that other heater will then click on and it mm -hmm. will hold the tank at 24 so um i'll never drop lower than 24 because i've got that bit of redundancy there um you know obviously yeah i think that's a, a good way to go and it's <laughs> a temperature controller is 
it's nothing. You know, it's going to cost you 60, 70 pounds. Don't know what that is in dollars. Maybe about the same in dollars, 60, mm-hmm. 70 dollars or something like that. But I think personally that a temperature controller is a must-have, just as just as much as a must-have as water in your tank, yep. personally. There's been about four people that just mentioned the Inkbird in the description, too. And that one's cheap. I was looking up on Amazon later. They're like 35 40 bucks. So that's prob- honestly never, probably I, one of your cheapest ones. I, I'm not, I use the D&D one. Yeah. Uh, the I, D&D temperature controller. My original one was like some cheap China one for like 20 bucks. This little box one that I mounted in and did the job same thing but yeah great point of earlier set let your temperature controller control your tank and set the con- temp temperature probe whatever on the actual heater itself a degree too higher so that it never actually wears out because it's never in use so you don't you have a very slow chance of anything ever sticking because it never gets used and if it's just acting as a backup to your other controller uh why did i stop using my calcium reactor do you like two-part electric doser better I stopped using it because I wanted that space in my sump for a frag rack. I'm still highly debating going back to a calcium reactor. Um, side kind of thing here. I, right now I'm also... the I did an experiment now with the Neptune dose where I have it dosing a tiny amount every like 15 minutes. So like every 15 to 20 minutes it does like a 0.7 mil dose or whatever. So super tiny dose and it's been keeping it rock solid stable. Um, I've been doing some testing with like every couple hour alkalinity testing and it's literally the swing was less than like 0.3 throughout the whole 24 hour period so it's like little tiny bumps up and down it's pretty darn stable um so i'm trying to mimic a calcium reactor i'm still on the fence so i'm gonna go back to a calcium reactor or not if i was buying all the dosing stuff i would probably be more tempted to do it uh buddy gave me a five gallon bucket full of calcium chloride and alkalinity stuff um it's like ghetto industrial grade but it's been working, the curls are happy, so I've been using that. So if I didn't have a big bucket of free stuff, I'd probably be more tempted to jump to the customer vector. Uh, Neptune Doser is loud. If you're running continuously, yes, it is loud. Um, if you use it for micro doses, you hardly notice it. So I actually, that's another benefit is, you know, the tiny doses you say, me, and that's it. So it's like super, not as noticeable. But yeah, if you're using it for an auto water change or something, like you want that baby in another room. Um, so, okay, another thing. Uh, controllers. So, I know, Michael, you don't have a controller. I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the fun begins. This is where the fun definitely <laughs> begins. Um, does anyone need a controller? No. Does it make your life easier? Yes. Um, I see them as another level of redundancy or fail-safes. There's lots of little things that I use mine for. For instance... If, um, so one thing, a skimmer, or skimmer overflowing, that's another thing that I hear that happens common enough. If I have a float valve in my return pump chamber, so if the water level rises, that little float valve will tell it to turn off the outlet to the skimmer. Uh, another thing I also have is a second level. I use Alexa to voice control reflink to tell the tank to go into feed mode. So I also have it watching the power monitoring of that plug. So if it drops below, say, 15 watts, it turns off my skimmer. So there's multi, like even right there, there's two different levels of things checking to see if the water level is going to rise or not. No, I do. Stian, super chat, 100 knock. Thanks, Stian. Much appreciate, buddy. The fish is jumping. Woo. What do you do, Michael? You remember to switch. push feed mode? I just switch a switch off. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is what I do. I'll show you. So this is how I initiate feed mode. Are you ready for this? Super duper technical. So first of all, I get my food and we initiate feed mode. We get the food, we walk over Michael, to the Michael, start feed mode. We get the board off. We switch the switch. We feed. We switch the switch again. <laughs> Do you flick the switch right away, or do you wait like 20 or 30 minutes? Feed mode initiated. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? No, um, um, sometimes I just don't turn the floor off at all, because what I tend, the way I tend to feed is I tend to feed more of a coral mix um, of mm-hmm. food. So I broadcast feed so that the corals, because um, I, uh, <laughs> I feed like, you know, small foods for, for, for the corals as well, and mixed in yep. with larger foods like mice so mm-hmm. I, I just tend to just broadcast feed that across the tank so most of the times i don't even 
turn the flow off. Um, but if I do turn the flow off, I'll turn it off. And I'll give it just just enough time for them to consume it because realistically the fish should be consuming all of that food in a, a couple of minutes anyway. Mm-hmm. And then I'll just, it's, it's a bit therapeutic for me as well. You know, I'll watch them feed, switch the switch back on, tank resumes its normal life. You know what I mean? That's fair. So <coughs> for me... None of this... None of this twi- and also as well, my skimmer is a red starfish skimmer, and it does have a three-minute um, uh, delay time. So if when I switch, because I physically switch the skimmer off, if I do switch everything off, yep. and then when I switch the skimmer back on, it has a three-minute delay, so it doesn't switch on when the water level's too high. So have you ever forgot to turn all your flow back on? Um... Uh, yes, probably. Probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I probably have. I that forget is. everything, so I probably yeah. That's the reason why um, I have all my pr- plugs in a row. So then when I switch them back on, I can see which ones are on and which ones are off. Yeah. And they all go on at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like it's, it's the same stroke of three switches. You know yeah. what I mean? But okay. In the past, mm-hmm. I've had like, you know, powerheads plugs at one side, powerhead plugs at the other. And yeah, I will have forgot. That's fair. Okay. K-Town Reaper, thank you for the super chat, and we'll hook you up some pods soon. Much appreciated. Okay, now, <laughs> on the Red Sea tank, there has been, because on the top, there's three switch, there are two switches to turn off the return pump and the skimmer. I have left that t- flow off multiple times overnight. Like, terrible. If, like, you go to feed them right before you run out the door to something, you come home, all the lights are off, you don't think about it. Having feed mode has probably saved that tank. There's been so many times I've got to turn the flow back on that it's terrible. So having that, even that the coral on there re- resuming everything, like human proofing it, has been like a big saver for me. Because usually, the controller is saving you from yourself, and for me, that's not turning something back on. So, so that's one thing for me, because I know I've done that multiple times. Same thing with RDI, I get distracted, work on a new project, you know, something overflows. So having those on it, like just those little flow valves, everything's been like a huge save, saver for me. I have the flip switch 2.0. <laughs> um, okay, so heater controllers, we talked about that. Um, redundancy for the skimmer is obviously a big one. Do, 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 do. I, I'm kind of spoiled now. I really appreciate the voice controlled. That's a, that's a nice perk. <laughs> uh, we're all sound freaks. Yep. <laughs> Two battery powered portable air bubblers. Um, battery powered air bubblers are actually pretty awesome. Uh, they're good for a saving thing. My only one potential small gripe, which is you can't get around it, but I hate having to see stuff in my tank, or otherwise I'd probably leave a little air bubbler thing just hanging in the tank because on. There is certain ones. Um, there's actually one I linked in the description to this video about one I found on Amazon for like 20 bucks or something. I might actually order it, but it will auto kick on to battery backup if you lose the power. So it has a little relay in it, it'll auto kick over. So you don't have to think about it, you'll get to oxygen in your tank. That's probably your cheapest way of providing oxygen and air during a power age. So that was kind of cool. Um, at Reef Palooza, Cobalt had one too. I don't know if it's out yet. I think it was a new product they're coming out with, but same thing where it would auto kick on a battery once it lost power. But I guess kind of a super cheap, kind of redundant way. Uh, next level up would be using something like a battery backup on your power heads. Because I mean, unless it's like the middle of winter and you're way up north somewhere, having flow in your tank is by far the most important thing during an extended power outage is because that's what's going to provide oxygen flow some surface breaking get oxygen back in the water and keep everyone alive and happy uh, as complicated as my system is i need to turn off my skimmer return pump for gyre i feed feed or do non-broadcast feed that's eight devices so that's that's eight switches that's a good chunk um but yeah i mean you don't no one needs a controller but it makes your life easier and to me, it's just more levels of fail saving, because then I could fail safe all the stuff that I do normally. But what if your what if your what if your controller fails? Well, then I'm in the same situation as you. I got to flip some switches. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but you're six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred pound deeper in your pocket. <laughs> well, so far so good. I've never had one fail. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it is another piece of equipment can fail, right? But it's also another layer of prevent- prevention, right? So it depends how you look at it. Um, Do you know, to be honest, you know, like I said, you know, I'm a, I am a bit of a, um, a controller snob, should we say, you know, obviously, um, 
Um, I'm one of those where certain things I'll be happy to pay stupid amounts for, certain things I won't. And um, I just, I've heard many, many people say about, you know, getting whatever controllers, you know, the, you know there's, there's lots of controllers on the market. And mm -hmm. it's been one of those for me where it's, it's, I find it difficult to warrant the cost when I can achieve what it, what is it going to achieve um, by using the flip switch 2.0. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know so what I mean? I'll but, yes, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, but there is certain things which I don't think I actually, so say for example, let's, let's use the Apex for example. Mm -hmm. You've got some features within your Apex like, uh, you know, power monitoring and stuff like that, which I don't think is available on the UK version, which I'm not entirely sure, but anyway. there is certain aspects of the Apex for example, which I find, you know, quite appealing, you know, stuff that, uh, like, like for example, just understanding the way that your tank works you know like when you're monitoring your ph for example when you switch your ozone on and and how your apex will switch your ozone off once you hit a certain orp and stuff like that yeah. you know i appreciate that i like that because you know it's 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 useful and it's something that i couldn't really do with the flip switch 2.0 you know i wouldn't mm -hmm. i wouldn't know or you know, I would if I had a, an extra, you know, standalone controller for ORP, but then obviously it gets expensive with multiple standalones. So, you know, I do I do see um, the draw to them, but I like to run as basic and as simple as I can. You know, my reef behind me literally is lights, wave makers, skimmer, refugium, return pump, heaters, job done. You so, know, I don't have, I don't have, you know, Mm -hmm. funny fancy things on it and it works you know what i mean so you just made a very good point um so you can buy like same thing for an orp controller like that's when i use like it's never had a kick in but if my orp ever got too high for too much ozone it would turn it off so it couldn't get to an unsafe level for my fish now you could buy an orp controller you could buy a ph controller you can buy all these controllers separately but it would be more expensive now there's an advantage that if one died it doesn't affect everything else right so there's an advantage having lots of separate pieces but on the flip side, there's also having an advantage having one that works together with everything else and kind of you can relate them all and correlate things and base off it. So, I mean, it's, it's a trade-off on both things. I remember speaking to Jake Adams about the topic as well, and he was mm -hmm. saying about, you know, he uses a lot of uh, Milwaukee controllers yeah. and he keeps them separate and standalone for mm -hmm. that fail-safe reason because, you know, if one goes down and it's, in, it, you know, if it's controlling them all, then everything goes down. So, you know... Again, I appreciate, you know, the pros and cons, and um, Tristan, I think it's Tristan just said, my controller is my backup. It's a $800 fail-safe for 15K in livestock. I mean, get that. Yep. You know, I get that. Um, but, like, for example, I've set my tank up in a way that I feel that, like, I if I had a large enough auto top-up, like, say, for example, if I had my 200-litre barrel and I brought it inside and connected it to my tank, you know, I'd be happy to leave my tank for two weeks on holiday mm -hmm. without even have anybody come and check on it because I wouldn't have any concerns other than potentially dumping that 200 litres in there. But, you know what I mean? It's, I wouldn't have any concerns about the tank where I feel I would need that level of redundancy because, you know, it is set up in a, in a super basic way. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, I, I keep on top of the pumps and stuff with vinegar cleaning and stuff like that to keep them efficient. Um, and I don't think I would have a, a, a concern to, to even worry about that. But that's just because, you know, just thinking about certain aspects of what could go wrong um, and, you know, you know, sorting the tank out around it, if you know what I mean. Yep. Um, quickly get into this one. Deanicus, I don't even know how to say that properly. Uh, he said he, he, I don't know why he deleted it, but you asked if does anyone have a back redundancy or backup for the refractor meters? Yes. <laughs> I have selenium probes in my tank. I have three refractor meters. I have a hydrometer, a little floaty one. And I got this amazing new toy, which I still have to do a video review on, but it's freaking amazing. Uh, Salinity pen. Freaking amazing. Which one is it? Is it the ice cap one? No, I'm better. Much better, and I'll tell you why when I do a video review. <laughs> I'll do is that. The Mantis, is it the Mantis one? Nope. Alright. But this one's better than them for one key feature, which you will find out. Um, I still gotta film it. But yeah, it's wicked. So handy, so much easier than a refractor meter. We'll go. We'll get to this in like a week or two. It's on my to-do list. But um, yeah, super awesome. Um, Michael Aaron's Aquarium. Fix your mic. Lots of reverb. 
Let me turn my audio down just in case it's back feeding a bit. Hopefully not. Try now. Do 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 do. Um, so yeah, that talked about temperature. What else we got on the list? Um, check valves. Make sure if you use them, clean them. Big big thing. Actually clean them. Uh, drains in the tank. Um, I I'm a huge fan of having multiple drains. Some people just have one or two, and I don't know, makes me cringe a bit. I have three on mine. I got my main drain, and I got one that just trickles over. That's mainly to keep it silent, but that second one can handle all that volume if it needs to. And I have another third drain that never gets used just as a backup in case the first two failed. So, you know, it take every drain to have its own fish or snail or something clogging it for something to happen. For three of them, all happen in there. Pretty rare, so it's pretty darn safe. But that's another big one for that. Am I am I still reverbing? Because I don't know whether it's because you're listening to me or whatever. I don't know because I've not got headphones on. I'm using speakers, so I don't know if that's why I'm getting reverb. If I am, I'll go and get my headphones. Okay. Hopefully, let me guys let me know if that's fixed. Hopefully, we're good now. I turned down my speakers as well, just in case my mic was picking you up. Right. Um, what's going on, Dave? Dave's nano tanks. Hopefully, you're doing well, buddy. Um, recal. If you can recalibrate the pen, oh, buddy, huge feature. Most of them you can't. This one you can. Massive benefit. Ice caps, those ones you can't you can't calibrate them. How do you know if it buggers up? This one you can recalibrate it, which is huge. It's money. Love it. So easy. Like, boop. Oh, there's my salinity. Temp salinity, everything's great. Easy Two seconds. Buy. No calibrate. If you drop it, who cares? It doesn't script the calibration like refractometer. Super awesome. Anyways, I gotta stop telling everything. I gotta do a video on that one soon. But yes, it's pretty easy. Easy buy. I'll tell you later. You can't just leave, I'll, I'll can't just leave ranking like that. I'll tell you soon. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll watch my video if I don't have to tell you later. Please do as you fuck. <laughs> Please. I technically showed it. You can probably pause and read it. <laughs> but yeah. It was probably your speakers, by the way, which was causing the reverb, because Haley said it's okay now. Okay. Yeah, I turned it down. Not my fault. Woo -woo. <laughs> yeah, I didn't feel like using headphones today, so free flow. Um, other forms of redundancy. What else we got? Uh, flow. Um, nope, not ice cap. Ice cap you can't calibrate, which is the, one of the biggest reasons I didn't go for that one. Uh, flow battery backup. Mo not a lot of people use battery backups. Even like a simple little seven lead acid ones, I caps, ice cap makes them for pretty universal ones. Um, Ecotech sells them for their stuff. However, honestly, it's pretty darn easy to make your own using a sealed lead, sealed lead acid battery and like a little battery maintainer. Uh, most of the pumps will run off 12 volt. Uh, my vector pump was 36 volts, so I bought that little battery booster for like 20 bucks that put it from 12 to 24 volts. And I hooked, just wired up all my pumps basically to this giant battery. So my power could be out for like five days and my flow would still keep on going. And that's one of the biggest things that will save a tank. And just as a little plug for MaxBeg, MaxBeg 200 series gyro has also come with the cable required for you to connect up to battery backup, backup and you can obviously link up to like the ice cap battery backups and stuff like that nice that um that coral box pump that i bought actually the little hockey puck style one that came with a usb to plug cables so you could hook up to like a battery i tried hooking off a cell phone charger and it ran it for a while so it's good just oh, for fun so you could ruin it off a like a power pack yep like a power bank. Yeah, exactly. So I tried it just off like a little dicky one. Like I got this guy's like 10,000 milliamps, probably running for you a while to test it to see how long it go. But it's, it's a good backup. I mean, the power is out. If you're around, you can just plug into a cell phone charger and keep it going for a while. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's funny. That could do it. Hum humans are flawed. I love my. This is from Tristan. Uh, that's funny thing that humans, that we are flawed. I love my Apex. Look at the competition as benefits to consumers. I, I agree. A little healthy competition is good. It makes for newer, better, more innovative products. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good to have a bit of competition. So, um, so obviously then, on the old, on the old thingy side, um, you, you and I are both sort of like, you know, we're on different sides of the fence, so that's yeah. clear. You know, I like to keep things simple. Obviously, a lot of guys in the chat right now like to, you know, I like to go with the tech and stuff, but do you, you know, obviously now that you've experienced it and all that, like, do you honestly think that um, you couldn't live without it, or do you think it's just something because you've got it, you use it? I I could live without it, but I wouldn't want to. It's a peace of mind. And if, like, for instance, if I leave town for a couple weeks, I can pull up my app and say, oh, everything looks good in the tank, right? I mean, if mm. my 
pump if the power goes out i'll get a note on my phone so i can be like i could text a buddy hey go check on my tank like if you're gone or you work away from home a lot what's going on wayne um or another thing is for instance like if my temperature gets too hot my phone will pop up give me a little message oh so this is out of range or my ato pump runs dry they'll let me know like it's all these little things it, it basically human proofs your tank to be honest so <laughs> i saw of do that but i use a senai Yep. You know, so obviously I've got a Senai, 100, 110, 120 pounds Senai. You know what I mean? Yep. Cheap as anything, mm -hmm. you know, if it's out of what. So I, I put my Senai in the return section of my yep. sump. So, you know, obviously if for some reason it runs dry, I'm going to get a notification to say that my Senai is out of water. You know, my temperature fluctuates. Again, I'm going to get a text message on my phone to tell me that, you know, something's happening and stuff like that. Again, it's sort of like it. Stuff like that is, it's that sort of like more sort of like makes me think, you know, why do I, and again, you said it yourself, I don't need to buy these more expensive controllers. Um, but, you know, obviously a lot of people just get them because they like them. But, mm -hmm. you know, there is a lot of controllability out there for a hell of a lot less. And like I said, the Senai, for example, is, you know, it's, it's, it's a tool. And obviously now you've got the, you know, the, the, the water sensor monitors. Yeah. which you can put on your floor or something like that to see if you have, you've got a leak. Um, I just, I, I, I still just find it difficult, if you know what I mean. Well, it's different levels, right? Like, the Senai can alert you if your temperature is too high or it runs dry, right? But it can't do anything about it. You still very need to true. call up and be like, hey, mate, go check on my tank. Where this, yeah, very... you could have it say, like, oh, this runs out, you know, maybe you have RODI plumbed into it and it opens the solenoid and refills your auto top off for you, for instance. Like, you can automate stuff. Or there's water on the floor, okay, maybe you turn off the return pump or something, right? So you, you can have it act on stuff versus just knowing about it. I think that's the biggest difference in terms of redundancy, or, or fail-safes may be a better term than some of it. But yeah, yeah, I mean, Senai is a great tool, and the fact that it's the cheapest way you can get a power meter, which everyone should have a power meter, so I mean, it's a great tool to have. I have one, I don't use the slides, just because I haven't been renewed. Actually, I don't even mind, I brought off a buddy, and I've had for like four months. But, um, I mean, just for your par meter alone, it's worth it. So it's definitely a good yeah. tool to have. Yeah, but you do make a fair point there as well. Again, you know, obviously, because I'm not a user, mm -hmm. um, I think about things probably probably in a two-dimensional way sometimes. Um, and like you said, is I'm seeing things from a certain perspective, but then obviously when you, you know, you're explaining it like that, yes, I, I can find out that things are going to be happening, but I can't do anything about it unless I ring somebody up and say, go around to my house. Whereas, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you know, set it so that it automatically deals with it or, mm -hmm. you know, you'll get a, you know, you, you, you can deal deal with it yourself, so to speak. So, you know, there's, there's, there's yin and yang, isn't there? There's pros and cons. Um, still mm -hmm. not sold though. <laughs> no, that's fair. Like my my future plans, like next level at all, is going to be automating water changes when I move the tank one day. Same thing, ATO. Like have a sensor because I have an optical sensor in my ATO container now, so it will tell me if it ever runs too low. But you could hook that up to your ODI with a solenoid and a float valve and say, okay, if this is tripped, then turn on your our ODI system, right? And have it literally completely automated with backups, with a ball valve, with a solenoid. in it. So you can do all that stuff for, like, again, multiple layers of redundancy. Now, what another cool thing I want to do eventually is add in, like, one of those little... I want to find a really tiny, like, pan-tilt zoom camera. Or, I don't care about zoom, but pan-tilt. So I can have a little one, like, hidden underneath my tank, just put down on the stand. And you can pan it around. Something happens, you, you know, you're, you're away, you can pull open your phone and take a peek inside the stand, make sure everything looks good. So, I don't know. All those little things are they're cool. It's... If the sad thing is, I work from home. I still do all this, <laughs> but when you're not at home, it allows you to deal with stuff kind of remotely. Excellent, Wayne. Thank you. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Tristan. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So yeah, it's the ability to automate doing stuff about it. And the other part of it, I mean, I'm a complete tech geek. I have a computer science degree. I I am a complete geek in that respect. So I love. I love this stuff just because I like tech stuff, right? So that's, that's a huge draw for me as well. Um, there is peace of mind, but it's also I'm a tech geek and I like it. That being said, I've built my own controller in the past. I built my own auto top off. Like, I've built these things as well as buying them. So I've kind of went to both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. That was fun. I think, me, I think for me, it's more just sort of like... I think it's more because obviously I don't know anybody either, and obviously the uh, the UK version is a little bit different. So mm -hmm. I don't know anybody with this type of equipment. So I've not really 
you know, being able to be sort of like influenced by anybody or, you know, thingy. So obviously for me, well, to be honest, I think, I still think even if I did, you know, the way that I am at the moment is I don't, I don't think I'd, you know, I'd, I'd still get one because obviously I'm, I don't need it. You know, the tank, mm-hmm. the tank runs fine. And obviously if the power does go out, which is probably going to be the, you know, the ultimate issue with this yeah. tank, um, you know, it's, it's set up to deal with that. And then, um, you know, if, uh, if and when the one thing that I definitely do need though, is a battery backup. That's something yeah. that, you know, I definitely, definitely need, and I definitely need to get on top of that one without a doubt. Because even just for know, a, even for a single power head, right? Just yeah. so there's flow in your tank. Yeah, that's it. And I know myself that that I've said it for years. <laughs> I Do need something one. about it. And just, it'll be honestly, the, the, it's like when people need a generator because they know winter's coming, or it mm-hmm. tends to be when power's gone out then they'll want to buy a generator so it takes for something to happen before you buy the product do you know what i mean before you buy the thing and i think that's me where i need to have it happen to me before i uh before i buy it which is stupid i know yeah um, but yeah definitely um battery backup i've been saying honestly i'm not even lying i've probably been saying it for two years that i need to get one <laughs> so i'll uh i'll find out tomorrow because uh um Stian's just asked if um what the available ones are in the UK for the for the gyro, and I'll I'll grab um, one. I'm pretty sure Ice Cap's your best bet on that one. Ice Cap's an American product, though. So ah. DIY, buddy, good. I got a video on that one. Have you? Yeah, DIY battery backup. YouTube it. I'll come up. Oh yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it. I didn't understand it. Oh well, then maybe I'll make an updated <laughs> one and make it you know easier. I'm technical to a point. <laughs> I'll make. It- I will make it even easier, and maybe I'll film a, a revamped version of it soon. Step by step. You can step by step walk me through it. Okay, this connector, <laughs> crimp next. Um, but yeah, okay, heater controller, and a battery backup for at least one power head. I would say those are the two essential redundancies that someone should have, and a float valve on your auto top off. Okay, three things, three basics essentials that I would recommend everyone do. Um, as for controlling stuff, I know a lot of people lately, one of the other things, they'll use, use smart plugs so they can do voice control or do stuff with that, which is basically a nice way to flip your switches for you, but then you don't really have if-then situations. Um, you can kind of just tell it to do something, which is still handy, still kind of a cool feature, and it's kind of a good way to, a cheap way to voice control and add some of those cool features to your tank. Uh, generator inverter, if it's automatic. Some people go crazy and they do the whole house jennies which are sweet but they're not cheap they're expensive um it's all about learning from mistakes yeah even like um those ups's used for a computer like i think my buddy bought one at a thrift store for like 20 bucks and you put that on his tank right it's just something to keep that flow going that's another very cheap way to do it moonlights are on now yes it is like i see the faint blue in the sand bed there michael <laughs> yeah, well, to be honest, it looks brighter on the camera than now oh does it yeah, your sound looks a decent glow to it on my screen, anyways. It's really, it's really dark to the eye. Mm-hmm. I've got the uh, the uh, what light have I got? <laughs> I don't know. What do you have? Kel- I don't know. Okay. You oh, the Kelo A two hundred on, which is the equivalent to the Cobalt C ray for yep. you Americans, and um, I've got it set to a moonlight function. So for a certain period of time, like quite a lot of the night, to be honest. Um, the lights are on. Well, the moonlight is on um, for most of the night, to be fair. But um, it's very, it, it's not as bright as it seems on the camera, knowing it. Okay. Very, very good. <laughs> Reef dudes, you can't live with all the bells and whistles. You're very tech savvy. Yeah, it's true. I like my tech toys. How much uptime does your electricity facility claim to provide to USA? I have no idea. I don't even know what that means. I don't know either. I'm confused. Re ask that question if you can. <laughs> uh, one thing to consider about your backups is they don't get turned off when they get wet like a GFCI. Um, yeah, but you're also running stuff at low voltage, right? You're running at 12 volts, not 120 volts. So you're pretty safe. And if you're worried, just put a fuse in there in line. Ideally, you know, just have a fuse off your pause or your ground or whatever. And if something does get shorted, it'll pop the fuse and then you're basically a GFCI. Um, thank you, GFCI. You should all have a GFCI in your tank. 
a $20 plug you can screw into the wall and if something does get short or something it's going to pop it, kill the power and potentially save you and all your livestock. So GFSI is another thing that you should definitely put on all of your tanks. Some people say they don't because they get tripped too easily but really that's the point of them. Especially if you have a battery backup for your flow then everything will be fine short term until it gets reset. Don't you have to manually reset those to get them back on again? You do, you do. But if okay. you have a battery backup on your pumps then your fish will be fine for a bit. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I've heard from people saying that, you know, like you said, they do trip easily and sometimes they'll trip for very mediocre reasons and you might not realize and, you know, your tank's off. And again, if you haven't got a fail safe for your fail safe <laughs> and then a fail safe for your fail safe thing, you screwed out. So <laughs> I think, I think, it, I think. So, like, back to the redundancy side, I think, like, you know, backups for backups. It's like I said to you when we was on Paul's channel is, where does it stop? You know what I mean? You know, where does it start? Where does it stop? Because, mm. you know, like I said, is you're putting a fail-safe on for a fail-safe and then a fail-safe for a fail-safe. You know, like, you put a battery backup on for your battery backup just in case. You know what I mean? Your battery backup runs dry or, you know, it's, it's one of those where is... There's got to be a time when you've got to sort of like say this is getting silly now. You know what I mean? Um, you know, there's mm -hmm. this redundancy and then there's just being daft. Um, uh, where is that level? You know, because for some people, like your level and my level, for example, will probably can be, can be completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, you know, where, where, where is that point when you say like stuff's getting out of hand now? Because at the end of the day, you know, it is, you know, obviously it's an expensive glass box. Yes. With water in it you know what i mean but i think sometimes we've become as hobbyists we come um, a little bit too mother hen you well, know what i mean the, um but the thing is a lot of people spend if you think of how much money you spend on corals and fish you have that like a lot of people have thousands of dollars in their tank i mean it's not uncommon to buy a spend a hundred dollars on a coral frag or two think how many you put in over the years like it's a lot of money invested in there yeah so why would you in um so what you know so my 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 point basically is right is if that is the case then you know set your tank up so that it's you know it, it can deal like with with it without having to rely on some sort of technology in a way because again the you know technology can fail again like if if the power goes out for example yeah. your apex goes out no it's not um, better back up to you <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, though, don't you? If, no, if I, you I, I do. But the thing to consider, I don't know. You asked a minute ago about how many levels of backup. I think everything should have at least one level of backup. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, two is better, well, but at least one. It doesn't necessarily have to be a technical backup, though, does it? It doesn't have to be. It could be just the case of extra space in your sump. No, exactly. But th that's the thing, right? Having a check valve is potentially one. Having a battery backup on your return pump is another. Having space in your sump to handle that water volume is a third, right? I mean, there's three levels right there that someone could potentially have. Uh, someone's asking, what type of glass is the wife tank? Is it regular glass, low iron tank glass? What do you guys... Everybody's got different names for it. It's low iron. Okay, it's that, low iron. It's the, the more, the Starfire, more low iron. Okay. Low iron, yes. Yeah. We call it Opti White. You call it yeah. whatever. But it's low iron glass. Mm. Oh, that question a minute ago. He's asking how reliable is the power where we are? Where I am is actually really good. It hardly ever goes out. And if it does, it's like an hour or two. I was talking to someone the other day from Texas. They said theirs is very unreliable. It goes out constantly. So it really depends on where you are. I mean, every province, state, area, community, whatever, could potentially be different, right? So... For me, my power is very reliable. My battery backup is extremely overkill because it could last for like six days and my power is over up more than a few hours. And that's like a couple times a year. So it's completely overkill. I'll probably end up putting a smaller battery in when I do my tank upgrade just to save more space. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, where I live, power is, again, very reliable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've not got to really worry about it. And normally, unless something drastic happens, if they're tinkering or if they're messing, we'll get a text message or something, some it's form up. of notification to pre-warn us that, you know, the power's going to be out. So we've got plenty of time to react. Mm -hmm. And obviously, because this country isn't um, a country prone to snow days or, you know, we just get rain, <laughs> you know, so we don't really get ridiculous weather fronts where, you know, 
we need generators or anything like that. So, you know, say for example, if if I was to get a text message saying that my power is going to be off for 24 hours, 48 hours or anything, it's relatively simple for me to just go out and get a generator because I live in a city, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it's not really a, a, a it's not really going to be a, a city wide event. So it'll just be street by street. So I could just go to anywhere. Statue court off your neighbor's to... house. <laughs> exactly. Where, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously the neighbor would be out as well. But you know, obviously with like, say for example, um, Ryan McCollum, who's mm -hmm. over in Massachusetts. You know, they had power outages for days. You know, uh, uh, Billy Pipes. You know, when we had the winter. You know, Billy he had like power outage for days as well. You know, on that situation then. You know the whole area is going straight to walmart or wherever to go and buy a generator yeah. and you know and you don't have one he's not, he's not going to be available are they? so i think it's it's one of those is balancing it that way isn't it i'm lucky where i live because we don't have ridiculous weather fronts you know we have rain and then like recently Worry. we've had like a good few months of sun and everybody's been crying. <laughs> it's too hot. It's too hot. Come in, back, rain. In a month, it's too cold. Where's the sun? <laughs> and now the wind in that is too cold and it's raining. Can't win in England. <laughs> yeah. But, no, I mean, it's true. I mean, the same thing is, you're right. Everyone does think about it once they're in the disaster. Being preventative is what actually saves you and takes away all the stress from it, right? So that's one kind of thing to consider. For, for that, I mean... Battery backup, heater controller, check valve, honestly the biggest things that one should 100% definitely do. Um, fishing to oxygen, yes. The cheapest way, if you don't have any of that stuff, go buy a battery powered air pump off Amazon for like 10 bucks. That alone can save your tank through an extended power outage. You know, have a couple batteries kicking around, right? Super easy. I even linked one in the description because I have I have two of them. I've never had to use them, but I bought them just because if you ever need it. Or if you're driving across the country with your fish in a bucket, at least you can oxygenate them and keep them going. So these can't little... really get those in this country, you know. Really? Uh, Marina, Marina do one, don't they? Um, a little battery power bubbler, mm -hmm. but it's not available here. Oh, um, Amazon, man. And I don't, I don't know. Yeah, obviously I can get it Ten imported, bucks. but you know, yeah, it's one of those again. It's it, it, it tends to be the case of if you I don't think about it until I need it. If you remind you know I me, mean? remind me, maybe I'll bring you one. To Macna. if you remind me, because I won't I remember. Buy one while I'm there. That's fair. You could. <laughs> If you remind me, I'll bring oh, you one because I have two. Michael, are you going to Macna? Are you, are you going to Macna? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, on this note, um, if anyone is going to the Neptune meetup, come say hi because I am now doing a talk there. <laughs> so, if anyone wants to wake up bright and early on Friday, you know where to be. Uh, natural gas generator. That would actually be a, a wicked way to go because natural gas, I don't think, ever goes out. So you're pretty darn safe there. One day, maybe. 15 gallons of gas. Yeah, that's a good chunk. All right, guys. We're at about an hour. I'm sticking to my hour-ish live streams for summertime. Winter will maybe go a bit longer, but any last questions, let me know in the comments. Michael, I appreciate your Flip Switch 2.0 controller perspective of it all <laughs> <laughs> i know a lot of these people in there they might not be admitting it but they're all flip switch 2.0 users as well Haley admitted it <laughs> yeah there's definitely lots out there um space heaters yeah exactly um good point um other backups you should take into consideration besides electricity like space heaters lights tanks etc um actually another really good example so i, I was telling one of my buddies and he was saying that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to put two return pumps on my next tank. He's like, what? That's so stupid. Why would you do that? Such a waste of money. He came over here last week, and he's like, can I borrow your return pump? He's like, mine died. I'm like, he's like, he's like, yeah, two weeks ago I thought that was stupid. Now it totally makes sense. I'm like, uh-huh. It's not common, but it happens. I'm like, if you had two return pumps, you wouldn't have missed a beat. <laughs> Woody's, re Woody's Reef, so mm -hmm. Woody, yep. has literally, and I kid you not, this is straight up, you hear people saying it, but he has got a cupboard. I, I, I honestly, he's got a mini aquarium shop in his cupboard in his home, and not, and, and he's not, he's got things like Ecotech pumps in there. Really? Just, just as a spare, brand new. He's got um, Red Drag, is it Red Dragon? Yeah. Seymour, what's that pump called? Red Dragon, I think it is. In like a really expensive return pump, sat in his cupboard. 
just in case. So if he was to have a you know a return pump fail, a wave maker fail, or whatever, is He's not going to be reaching for the J Bob. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be pulling out another MP5. <laughs> He's going to be pulling out an Abyss pump or well, something like that. The, only the best for Sir Woody. Only the best for it's, Sir. It's royalty. <laughs> only that high end. The, the royal exclusive pump, right? You see the only, trend here. Oh yeah. <laughs> only, only, the, only yeah. the best. But yeah, no. Obviously, uh, um, that is definitely again. It's it, it's that mentality, isn't it, of um, mm-hmm. not thinking you need it until you need it and well, that's actually another great thing too like before like i only had my one return pump and i upgraded from my which whatever jbo to the m1 the vectra and i sold my jbo to help fund the new one but at the same time i'm like i probably should have kept that just as a backup but it's like all those yeah. things right you know having that extra equipment takes away that panic you know it's the weekend the store is closed you're panicking to find something or if you had another one laying on hand maybe it's a smaller or old one whatever but it's something it's just then it's not a big deal to swap it in, or just well, run to this pump here above my shoulder here. Yeah, uh, you know everybody hates it. Whenever I do a reef update, why have you still got that pump in your tank? It's horrible, blah blah blah. But the thing is, is that is I literally bought that pump when I first came into the hobby. Mm-hmm. That was my first ever wave maker. Um, it's a seat cheap pump, so the, the the bulletproof those things mm-hmm. and. That's my obviously when when I was tuning my flow for my aquarium, I realised that one pump just wasn't enough, and a gyra two eighty is three hundred and odd pounds, and I just don't have the funds to buy one. So um, I needed I needed something, so I went into the to the cupboard, and you know I'd never sold it, I still had it. So yep. you know it is a good idea to have you know pumps and stuff in your cupboard if you can, and when again, I need to the basics. Yeah, you know, like you said, mm-hmm. if it's an old one, so say, for example, you've got a good deal on a new pump, like what you've had, you know, you've gone from the, the j Bow to the Vectra, mm-hmm. um, and it's like, well, yeah, you know, I've, I've really started to do that. Like, these lights from behind me, for example, I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got six of them because I don't sell them. You know, I used to sell lights to get new lights, but the thing is, is it always turns out that I want to set up a new tank, and I've got no, I've got, I've got everything. I've got heaters in the cupboard. I've got some sort of filtration, whether it's an internal, a canister, or mm-hmm. just something I make myself. But I've never got lights, so I've just, to be honest, I've stopped selling things. You know, I've just stopped yeah. selling things. I've got, I've got the magic cupboard over there that's packed full of all sorts of stuff. There's lights, there's heaters, the pumps, and everything in there. So. I ain't got to worry. So it's mm-hmm. that's sort of like my redundancy. Definitely is just having spare equipment um, yep. available. Um, that's a really good one. I feel that's definitely one that, again, everybody like a temperature controller should at least have a spare wave maker or uh, a return pump. Don't necessarily like if you're running a, a I don't know a you know a a, a, a Vectra pump or mm-hmm. a, a dual turbine pump or whatever. You don't necessarily need to have another one of those in your cupboard. You could have something like a JBO or something that's nice and cheap, just as yep. a, a backup, backup, and then mm-hmm. you know you swap it out once you buy your replacement for your. Or your be good like one. Woody and just yeah. keep your good one until your JBO dies. <laughs> that's the weird thing as well. Yeah, he's yeah. running a JBO, but he's got a flipping uh, a red dragon in the thing. He don't make <laughs> that one. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I think I'm going to call it for now, but thank you guys so much for joining. If you enjoyed it, as always, smash that like button. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments after the video later. Reachuse.com slash ask. Ask them there. Either I'll respond by email. If it's a bigger one, I'll make a video about it. And, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video or next stream. Hopefully, I'll see some of you guys in Magna. Make sure you guys come say hi. All right, guys, much appreciated. Thanks for coming on. Don't forget to subscribe to Aaron's Aquarium. And Reef Dudes. <laughs> Hit that bell. <laughs> okay, just have a good day, guys. Thank <laughs> you.